So last week we talked about database reorgs, reorganizing a table within a table space. How do you go about doing it and the safe way to do it? And we skirted by why you may do it. You may have to rebuild a compression dictionary or you altered a table that already had established data in it and knocked off a column. But one of the main reasons DBAs do a reorg is to try to keep the physical footprint of their database down. As DB2 is writing information, it's writing data physically down and deleting it and writing it and physically deleting it. And if you're familiar with the need of doing a disk defrag on your home PC, that's essentially what you're doing here. I'm going to talk a little bit about why we do what we do, how to identify the high watermark and how to lower it. And then I'm going to discuss how to reclaim the space that you just freed up. So the very beginning is going to be a lot of the logic about why we do what we do. But the tail end is going to be here are the physical commands. So pay attention to the timestamps below and jump to where you need to go. But the part I want you to understand as we go into this is the concept of a high watermark. And if you've looked at a pier or you've been at a dock and you've looked at the pylons that hold up the dock or the pier, you can see that there was a place water was during high tide. So if your pier is way up here on stilts or pylons and the water came in at high tide, it came up and it sat up here for a few hours. And then as tide released, it did low tide, it comes back down but you can see the imprint of where the water was. The wood is still wet there. You've got a little dry section where it never touched. You've got the wet section that hasn't dried out yet and tide is now much, much lower. But we know tomorrow that when high tide comes in, it's probably going to raise right up to about the same amount that it was using before on the pylon or the water will raise that high and then it will come back down. It's the same concept within DB2. DB2 remembers how much space you needed, how many pages and extensions you needed to hold your data at one point in time. And it goes, you're probably going to use it again, so I'm not going to release it. Well, what happens if you do an initial big pump of data and your table just explodes way out, but now the audit requirement is released? and you purge three quarters of that information. Well, now I only need this much space. I don't need all of this, but DB2 will go, mm -mm, I'm not releasing that high water mark because you'll probably end up using this space again. And what it will do is it will look at that, those empty extents and the empty pages that are no longer being used. And as it writes data, it's going to be picking and choosing where it writes. So your data becomes fragmented. The process of doing a reorg says, do me a favor, move all that data up front into one contiguous space. This is what's going to be your new higher watermark eventually. And move all the empty pages, all the empty extents to the end. But then you have to tell DB2, chop it off. I am never going to use that much space again. Release it. Then DB2 goes, okay, I understand what you want. I'm not going to hold this high water mark anymore. I'm not going to hold these empty extents anymore. I now understand you only need about this much space. That's what we're going to go into next. The next few slides are going to talk about how to look at that high water mark and identify what DB2 thinks is the data at the very end holding that high water mark. Then we'll talk about how to do the reorg real quick to move things around, and then we will talk about how to reduce the high water mark and release things back to the operating system. All right, that was a lot. You ready to go? Let's take a look at the slides. Before doing any table space work, you need to know what your table spaces look like, and my preference is DB2PD. It can tell you a lot about what your table spaces look like. First of all, it's going to give you a table space ID, which will map to a table space name. It will tell you whether you can auto resize what you have with these specific table spaces. It will show you the high water mark, which is what DB2 believes is the, the greatest amount of pages it needs to hold all of this data. 
And you have free pages and pending free pages, where pending free pages are what would be initially released from a reorg, what DB2 now sees as, hey, these have the capability of being released back, I don't need them anymore, and free pages, which these are pages that are absolutely empty, I know I no longer need them, and I can give them back to the operating system. And you can look here and say, I don't have any pending free pages, but man, whatever reorg I did before gave me a lot of free pages that I can eventually give over to the operating system. What does it look like? These pages of data, these extents, I mean, we talk about trying to create a, a one large piece of contiguous data and a large contiguous area of empty space. If you actually look at how things are laid out, it looks like this top piece here. And the detailed high watermark command with DB2 Dart will say, this is how things are physically laid out. If you notice, I have a bunch of empty space here. This is data. These are empty areas that I could write data. But at the tail end, again, it's not contiguous, I actually have data written. What I want to do during my reorg, what we were talking about last week, is go and move the data up front so all the data is contiguous and leave all the empty space in the end, which is what you'll see in that next screen capture. Once we're done, we have everything empty at the very end of the table space. What is that last piece there, that 8719, that object ID? There are much easier ways to get this. This is just more for your edification so you can understand. But if you want to find out what it is the hard way, you can start querying system tables and figure out what the table name is. And you can guess if it's an index or data. You can find out all sorts of information by querying the table. But the easier way to do it is just to look a little further in that detailed high watermark command. It'll say, hey, what's holding it at the very end is actually an index extent. And if you want to use 8719 as your object ID in those other SQL on the previous slide, you can find out for what table and, and what table needs to be affected here. What I want to point out is it's only showing you what's at the tail end holding that high watermark. Just because you reorg this area right here doesn't mean that you've done a reorg over the whole table space. You're going to reclaim back some space, but not nearly as much as you could. So there is another way to handle that, and that is to do the lower high watermark command with DB2 Dart. If you do this, it will go and take a look at the extent and work through the what if process. Okay, I know at the very end he needs to do a reorg on this specific table, and once he's done, he's going to have some empty extents. But if he goes and he reorgs this second table, he'll end up having even more extents, and it'll play that through so on and so on and so on to give you the most optimal uh, solution to your reorg problem. And you'll see that here. Notice it says step one. So it identified this object ID that needs to be moved, and I can go ahead and do a reorg on this. But then there's a step two that says, go reorg this table, and a step three that says, go reorg this table. Now, something else that you've got to watch out for is when it says, hey, unload and reload your data. But we'll talk about that in a second. So I have free pages, pending free pages. I just did a reorg, and in this example, I was just moving one little item, right? I was moving the tail end, and now I have 64 pending free pages. We need to tell DB2, yes, you can go ahead and put that into the free pages area. Those are the ones that we are definitely going to try to reclaim. If you don't, it's not going to try to, and this frustrates me because it has to be a separate step, and it's not intuitive. If you ended up doing a reorg over many, many, many tables, uh, over many different table spaces, and you have a ton of pending free pages, 
and you do not do these next steps, you will not be able to reclaim them. So you have to do a one of three items, either a list table spaces show detail, and that show detail is important. You need to either create or drop the new object, or you need to bounce the database. Once any of those three are done, your pending free pages can be moved into the free pages area. Now it's ready to reclaim. To reclaim it, this is the point where you're telling DB2, you now know what's absolutely free. Let it go. Release it back to the operating system, which will lower your capacity. If you were at 50% capacity for your data file system, now you may drop down to 40. It will also lower the high water mark. DB2 will now understand, okay, I don't have to hold all of these pages. I now know that the data is all laid out in one big chunk and my high water mark isn't nearly as high. To do this, you have to do the alter table space reduce command. You can do this in a couple different fashions. Uh, most people will end up doing reduce max. As a matter of fact, we do this in an automated fashion because we're doing it once a week or once a month and we know what we're reclaiming as manageable. When you issue the reduce command, there is extent movement behind the scenes. I will tell you this should not block out access. However, it could drain your resources a little bit. And depending on how much is going on, you may want to take it in more of a controlled manner. Like, I have a lot of free pages to take back. I don't know how long that's going to run, and I don't know how many of my resources are going to suck up. So instead of doing reduce max, let me do reduce 10%, observe how long it takes and the impact on my system. And your ultimate fail safe is you can always issue a stop. And the good thing about this is it doesn't try to do a rollback. It just looks at where it was and go, all right, I've already reclaimed 20% of those free pages and it's back to the operating system. Um, and that's great. I could stop here and never have to do it again and you'll still function. But if you start it up, it'll work on the next chunk for you until you tell it to stop or it completes. When you are doing this internal extent movement, don't panic if you look at your locks and you see you have an X lock. The X lock is on the internal extent movement. Basically this says you're not going to go try to change the table with a DDL or do anything major like that. It's not going to lock out access to any of your tables. If you want to see your progress, there is a system proc that you can go take a look at and just do a blanket select star and it'll give you all sorts of information. One piece of SQL I used that I think is fantastic came from datageek.blog. It was on a guest article by Ian Behorvda. And it will give you an idea of how many extents you had and how many have been moved already and how long it took and an estimated time. I will tell you that the time is definitely uh, plus or minus 50%, but it was still good for me to see. Um, the percentage and the movement of extents also helped me judge how far along I was going. You don't necessarily need to do this if you are working on a reorg and a reclaim of a small table or even a medium table. But if you're like me and I ended up having to try to reclaim 200 gigs worth of you know, reclaimed extents, this took a little while. Wasn't too hard of a concept to grasp, was it? You have an idea of how the watermarks work. You know how to use DB2 Dart to look at what's holding the high watermark. You also know how to use DB2 Dart to try to figure out how to lower the high watermark and that it could give you a bunch of steps to do this. The one thing I didn't cover there in depth is that sometimes it will say reorging isn't really going to work. The best and most efficient way of doing this is to export all the data, drop recreate and bring it back in or do a truncate and bring it back in. And sometimes if you have a lot of referential integrity and parent-child relationships, that can be intimidating and it could be complicated and it may not be worth the effort. But it's also something to consider, especially if you have no referential integrity, you could truncate the heck out of that table and not worry about it. Uh, that's also a really good way to go. 
And a good example of this is what I did about two weeks ago. And be honest, this is something I ask as an interviewing question. If I have 140 million rows, but now I only need to keep 20 million of those rows, what's the best way to go about doing this? And a lot of times people will say, just issue the delete. Well, that delete can take a long time and then reorging can take a long time. Whereas if you go and you export only the rows you need, truncate the table, reload it, and then go do the reclaim, it's a lot more efficient and it doesn't harm or lock anything out because everything's done behind the scenes with extent move it. So there are fringe cases where you're going to run into that. It's just more for you to know that it's there. It may not be the best way to go. But if you're reorging regularly, you're going to get good performance. Things are going to cluster together properly, and it should be easy to reduce max and reclaim that space as you need it. Well, that about covers it. That was a heavy topic between last session and this session. But now you have a better understanding of how to reorg, what it affects, the high water marks, what to watch out for. It should give you a really good primer when you need to go in and apply this in your own environment. That's it. Thanks for watching. If you got anything out of this, please subscribe, and I'll see you next episode.